morning ladies I am going to do um, a Christmas stocking today in honor of Christmas in July I have tea dyed um, some wedding appliques that off of a dress that may have given me um, and I want to kind of do this in like a shabby vintage um, theme. I have some, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to bring in some colors. Um, I do have this um, flower that I made and I love this color right here. I have some of this trim um, which I may incorporate in here but we'll just have to wait and see. So like I said what I've done is cut apart some pieces of the um, wedding dress and then coffee dyed these so I've just been playing a bit with placement on here and I kinda like the way that I have this right now so what I'm going to do I want to try to center this in the center of the top of the stocking so I'm just going to start gluing I'm just dabbing little bits of glue, not all over. It's not really necessary to do that. And I may or may not cut the edges of um, this off because I'm doing the same thing on the back of the stocking so this might just wrap around to the back side so for right now I'm not cutting this part off and then I have this larger applique that I want to put right in the center of this kind of line it up a bit now some of these pearls when you cut the appliques apart um, do come loose so I'll just be going back through with the glue gun and reattaching the any pearls that are you know loose on here like there's one you can see it right here just a little dab of glue and there's another one right there well if the glue strings didn't keep pulling it off there we go so, just doing the outside edges, as you can see. And I did leave some of the netting on the edges, like right here. It just, kind of to me, it just adds to that vintage look. So, but if you don't like that, you can surely trim it off. And uh, May has some absolutely gorgeous appliques that... Um, you could do the same thing with if you didn't have a wedding dress um, you could get some of her appliques and you could coffee dye them or you could avocado dye them if you wanted them pink um, just absolute limitless possibilities with what you can do so I'm going to flip this over and do the same thing on the other side like so I'm bringing this down far enough because I have some some trims that I want to put on the um, the top of the stocking as well. I just am in love with the vintage shabby look. tell you one thing doing these projects you sure do go through a lot of hot glue that is for sure you know back in the day um, one would have never thought of using a glue gun to do something like this you know it would have been hand stitched and 
albeit that is equally as pretty, um, it would be extremely time consuming. So thank goodness for whoever invented the glue gun. Because it is awesome. So many uses. It'll make your work so much easier. Especially if you're like me and you have trouble threading a needle. Um, it would be very difficult to do this on a, on a sewing machine. So you'd almost have to do it by hand. And you could. And that would be great as well. I just choose not to spend that much time because I'll tell you a secret about me. I'm very impatient so I don't like to spend a great deal of time on most things because um, I want to move on to the next one. So okay so there we have the front and the back. Now this has a, I don't know what I got on here it has a little stain on it but we'll cover that up. So now we have the front and the back, and what I'm going to do now is just trim these pieces off right here, and there goes another bead. So I'll just pop those back in there. I really like this Christmas in July idea because, um, you know, you get a head start on Christmas. I don't know about you guys, but I tend to procrastinate when it comes to um, Christmas time. And, and these projects, not only to decorate your own home, but they'd be beautiful gifts to someone. So I really like this Christmas in July. I was actually thinking this morning, okay, when July's over, I should just keep on working on the Christmas because um, that way... I have a big head start. I have done for years um, giving handmade Christmas gifts. Just, well, it started out because I had four kids and we didn't have a great deal of money. So, you know, I started creating gifts and it just sort of became a tradition. So I just have various pieces of these appliques that I have cut up and I'm just going to start piecing some here and there. I think that one fits perfectly, almost, almost perfectly. Let's see about this one. Let me cut this off a little bit, just a little bit of that netting. This particular one didn't, the netting didn't um, take the coffee dye very well. So let's see what this does, if this works on the toe. Yes, it does. And I'll just trim off any edges that need to be trimmed off. Or I may just leave them hanging. It is shabby after all. Okay, so let me find a piece for the other side of the toe. There's one. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. And these don't have to be, you know, exactly the same on both sides. Okay, that one works. You know, when I was cutting these up, I didn't really know what project I was cutting these up for, just that I knew I wanted to use some of these, and I knew that I wanted to coffee dye them so that I could get that vintage feel. And these turned out absolutely gorgeous in that coffee dye, but they would be equally as pretty done like an avocado or you know something of that nature even you know writ dye oops there we go all righty 
Now I have a few other pieces that I may be able to, oops, those are the ones I cut off, that I may be able to just kind of, you know, trim apart and put in here. I think what I'll do is cut this one off like so. And I can use that little piece somewhere else. Because I like the way that fits in there. And I'm not concerned if part of the um, canvas from the stocking shows through. You could cover this, you know, entire thing, the stocking that is, with, uh, you know, lace or fabric or something of that nature if you wanted to, if you don't like the look of the linen, but I kind of like it, so that's why I'm not worried about covering every square inch. Okay, let me see. Over on the other side. That'll work right there. Boy, it's been hot lately, I'm telling you. It's hotter than a cat on a hot tin roof. I think I took three showers yesterday. It was that hot. It just, ugh. I know, I know. We're going to be complaining because I live in Michigan. When, um, when the snow starts falling, we're going to be whining. It's too cold. Well, probably, but I'm telling you anymore, I think I would almost rather have the cold than the hot. It's just, ugh. if we didn't have the humidity, maybe it would be easier, but we got the humidity. So, all right, and like I said, I am not trying to make these match. It's just sort of random. Um, just kind of piecing it together little by little. And I'm going to cut this off right here. And a little bit of that netting because that was just a bit too much netting. go back through later on and glue these little beads that are loose on a little bit better. And right now I'm only going to concentrate on um, finishing up the one side on the video. Um, I will go back because it looks like I'm going to have to dye some more appliques. Um, I've pretty much gone through them. So I just want to cover this side as best I can. Just so you get the idea of where I'm going with this. And then of course, before I, um, you know, I will finish up the other side and post pictures before I put the video up. This one still had a lot of netting attached to it, but I'm not throwing this netting away because it can be used for all kinds of things like texture in a mixed media canvas or, you know, if you were going to make some of the bird's nests, which I still have yet to make one of those. Um, Angela did one, and so, you know, it was just beautiful. I absolutely loved it. So maybe I'll do a Christmas bird's nest. That would be kind of pretty. 
So, kind of like this. So I'm going to go like this. Yes. So I'm going to cut that off right there. And if these um, appliques overlap, that's okay too. That doesn't bother me one bit. That's what I love about doing the shabby chic, you know, because it doesn't have to be perfect. Well, one thing's for sure, I'm not. So it would only stand to reason that my projects would not be perfect either. Right? Right. And who wants perfection? This is handcrafted, and handcrafted is not perfection. If they want perfection, if people want perfection, then they can, you know, they could buy one that's factory created, and that's fine too. Okay, so you can see that I have a great deal of the stocking covered, and I'm just going to take... Um, I'm going to cut that one little flower out of there because it sticks out too far. And the next thing I want to do is to um, put the trim on the top here. going to waste this little flower and find a little spot to put it. And what did I do with those other pieces? I might be able to use some of these. Well, that was glued together. Um, somewhere? Maybe? Maybe not. I think I'll just leave that off for now. We'll probably find something else to put on there. So that's what we have so far. It's just all appliques. And we've got some spots here that, you know, we'll, we'll put something pretty in there. Not sure what yet, but. So there you go. And, I, and I'm and i going to trim these off because that doesn't look right when you're looking at it. Kind of distorts the shape of the stocking. There, that's better. Okay. Now this trim, um, this is a seven-layer trim that uh, Creating with Details carries, and this is the most versatile trim I think I have ever used. I have used this for so many things. Um, as you can see, there's not seven rows here because I have been cutting it. But this is sold by the yard, and I'm telling you, ladies, this is a must-have. You must get some of this because it goes such a long way, and it's extremely beautiful. So you can see, all I'm doing is just, <coughs> excuse me. I'm just going to start gluing here at the top, like so. And again, I could have sewed, sewn this, but <coughs> oh my goodness, I think I need something to drink. Bone dry. Um, but I chose to do it the easy way. So I'm just going to wrap this around to the back. I think this would make a gorgeous um, gift for someone. 
one of these, you know, a shabby chic stocking, especially if they are into that kind of style. And then I'm just going to tuck this under and fold this over like so. Oops. More glow. We need more glow. I'm just going to dab right here just to tack that down. Now I will be putting more up here, of course, on the top. But there you have that beautiful trim on here. Now I have pulled out a couple of other trims. I have some of this gimp trim. Um, that's also from Trading Details. So I just want to have a look see at how this might look on the top of the stocking. see how that looks. I think that's very pretty. It's very vintage. However, I also have some of this, which is too big. Okay, ixnay that one. Not using that one. So I also have some of this that I coffee dyed as well. I just wanted to have a look-see at what that would look like. Oh, wow, that's gorgeous. Hmm. I think I actually like that. And that solves the problem also of having to put a trim up here. What do you think? I like it. We're going with it. So... I'm just, I want these, um, the top of these little flowers to kind of stick up over the top of the stocking. Okay. Let me start this. Oops, that is the right side. Dingy. Dingy, dingy, dingy. So I'll set that aside. We may use it on something else. Another spot. Anyway. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just... Dab some glue right on here. And I'm going to wrap this around. To the other side. And I'm not going to glue these down because I like the movement of that. Okay. So I'm going to lift this up out of the way. And continue to glue this. Ouch. You think I would learn by now that glue is hot, wouldn't you? Evidently, I'm not very bright. was the absolute perfect size and believe it or not I did not measure that it was just some that I had left over from another project so now what I'm gonna do as you can see we've got this floppiness over here so what I'm gonna do is just kind of take a little bit of glue right here just a dot to glue those together same thing same thing here just a dot of glue just to bring those uneven, you know, those raw edges together. That's not making this, um, you know, pucker. It's still going to give it that loose feel. Just want to get rid of those floppy edges. So, and that's it. That's all I'm going to do with it. So there you see, we have these trims on here now. You can just go up in here and just kind of arrange it the way you want it to be.
Okay, there you go. Isn't that pretty? I love that. Now, I do have somewhere, I have some flat back pearls. Let me see what I did with those. What I think would be pretty. Oh, I hate when I get organized. I don't like it. I also have this, which, you know, that's a bit too much, I'm thinking. Let me see if I can find my cat. Oh, here they are. Okay. I'm just going to, um, I use this on the doll dress that I made. Uh, sorry. Um, and I did glue flat back pearls on here. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm just going to get some out. These are all varied sizes, which is okay. They don't all have to be the same. Just gives it a little bit of interest. I was watching May's um, video on her snow globe and that little bead thing that she had. I have to get one of those. If y'all haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it below. And I'll also put a link to her stockings below um, so that you guys can get some marvelous idea. See, that just adds that little something. It really does. And it ties it into all of the pearls that are on the bottom. Okay. So it's going to, I'm going to have to dye some more, cut up and dye some more um, appliques off the wedding dress. And then, uh, Finish up both sides of this. Oops, it's sticking to me. And see, I'm using two different sizes, but I kind of like the added interest it gives it. Now, on the uh, the doll dress that I did, I actually went through and um, glued little flat back pearls on here and I may do that just not on camera because you talk about tedious Ooh, that was some time consuming stuff but it was well worth the effort because I loved the look of it so there we have that now I want to see if I want to I don't think I want, oh, let's just see before I say I don't think. Hmm. I'm not sure I like that on there. I mean, I like it, but I don't know if I like it on here. So let's see what else we have. A little doily. No, I don't want to cover up. Oh, that is cute. What you can't see. Nah, takes away from it. Let's see if this would look good around. No. I do have this though. And this, this was from, uh, what was the name of the kit? It was a kit that May had anyway. Um, and this was some of the lace trim that uh, was in it. And I think this might be really pretty around the edges. Let's just have a look-see. Oh, yeah. I think I like it. What do you think? Do you like it? Wish I could hear you. Speak up. Hi, ladies. I'm back. I finished um, cutting out some more appliques and coffee dyeing them, and 
and as you can see I applied them to both sides of the stocking. I love the way that coffee dye makes um, especially appliques look. It's beautiful to me. It just gives it that vintage feel. Um, so I went ahead and I finished this up because I just had a little bit left to do. So I added the um, this trim right here oops, to the edge, the raw edges of the entire stocking. And I glued it right where the ribbon is on the, cent on the very edge of the stocking and then just glued both sides just to finish off the raw edges. So that's what I did um, to finish that up. Then I made a bow out of some, oh, what is this? You know, this stuff. Seam binding. Hello. I found the word. Yay me. Had to dig deep in my Funkin' Wagnall to get it. So anyway, I created a bow with that. And then I took one of these little appliques that's got the, the dangles on it. Now, I'm not sure if there's any of this trim left. Um, if there is, I will put a link to it in the description box. But there are a lot of other trims that are available. You could even take, um, if there isn't any of this left, it's basically kind of the same thing here. You could just cut these apart and it would just blend right in. So you could do that too. I put a flat back pearl in the center. I used some of the um, string pearls that are available at Creating with Details. Some more of the ribbon. And this ribbon I got in a kit a while back from May. Um, I think it was like a crochet lace grab bag kind of thing that she had put out. Um, I don't think that she carries anything like this right now, but you know, you could use any number of trims. This little trim is available, and I thought it was just so delicate, and the colors worked so well with this. <coughs> Pardon me. So, <coughs> goodness gracious. That is basically the finished product. It was super simple to do. Um, just make sure if you're going to use, you know, a bunch of appliques that you cut out enough so that you can finish your pro project. Because this stocking, as you can see, is, you know, it's fairly big. So it took quite a bit to cover it. Um, you would, you could use doilies, you could use lace, you could use anything that your little heart desires, you know, to do this. I wanted to keep it simple and, you know, somewhat elegant. I think it's a little elegant, shabby elegance, maybe. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video. I can't remember, but I'll mention it again. I just glued flat back pearls here. I think I did. Um, and I thought about, as I mentioned before, adding flat back pearls to each one of these, but I kind of like, you know, the contrast by not, you know, making everything pearls. But you could do that. You could even use bling if you wanted to. You know, like May has a uh, rhinestone trim that you could cut apart and put in here. You know, make it look sparkly and diamondy, kind of a wintry type look to it. Um, so that's pretty much it, ladies. Uh, if you liked this, if you haven't already, please subscribe and share. Um, and please, please, please be kind to one another. Pray for each other. Pray for our world. Um, I'm, I'm offer, offering up a prayer and an sincere condolences to the peace, people of Nice, France, um, in light of the terrorist attack there yesterday. Um, our world is turned upside down, inside out. Um, the devil is about his work. And, you know, we have to be vigilant. We have to be, we have to stand strong in our faith. And the best way to do that is to pray for one another, to pray for everyone, to pray for the world. Um, and that includes all of the strife and, and discourse that's been going on within the crafting community. 
um, we really need to put things into perspective and, and take a look at, in the big picture, does all of this matter? I mean, it, it's just, it doesn't mean anything when you think about what's going on, what's happening in people's lives. You know, the lives of the fallen police officers' families. Um, you know, the lives of the 77 people that were lost and their families in France. There's so much hatred and so much anger and so much strife that, you know, at least within our own communities, even if it's just a simple thing like the crafting community where we have all, we have one thing in common, all of us, despite our disagreements, despite our, you know, our dislike of certain people, we have one thing in common, and that's the love of creating things of beauty. You know, we need to step away from the computer, step outside and see the beauty of what God has given us. You can find it. It's there. Um, find the beauty in your life. Focus on that. It makes no sense to continue to belittle, degrade um, each other, to dig up dirt because you know we all have things that we have done said thought that we regret that we're sorry for we're human beings and human beings react with emotions rather than logic and when emotions take over it's usually not a good thing I mean think about it you know when your emotions you know um, get a hold of you, you're upset about something, your first instinct is to, you know, defend or attack. And we're all guilty of that. You know, I, I got caught up in all of this falderall. And, and for that, I regret it. Um, but it was based, emotion based. You know, I reacted and then I had to step back. And I had to put things into perspective and say, you know what, this is silly. This is really, really silly. You know, people are, are getting involved in things that really don't have anything to do with them. Um, and why? Why are we doing that? You know, we need to just ignore the negativity, um, no matter who posts it, myself included. Um, that's why, in a good faith gesture, I took down all of my As the Craft World Turns videos and that type of thing. It was a spoof, but people were taking offense to it, and that was not my intention. So, I took those videos down because I don't want to play a role in creating discourse. And unfortunately, that's what it was doing. So from here on out, and I want you all to hold me to this because you're my witness, as is God, um, my focus is only going to be on the good, the positive, and, you know, inspiration. I want to inspire through actions, and those actions include, you know, creating pretty stuff, because this is why we all came together. This is why we're all drawn to the crafting community. We are inspired by what others do, but we can easily be um, drawn in and put down and feeling horrible by the negative side of that. And that's what I see a lot of going on right now, and I don't want any part of it. And I know you guys are tired of hearing it, so I'm just going to say, please please treat each other the way you want to be treated with kindness with respect um, do it even if you think the other person isn't worthy of it because it will come back to you um, no matter what you do it will come back to you whether it be for good or whether it be for evil and the devil is definitely about his work so until the next video ladies um, God bless each of you I love you. Join me in praying for the world. Um, stand strong in your faith. 
and be kind to one another. God bless you. Bye-bye.